Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with a question I want to ask all of you. Are you all ready to see other properties from other companies enter into magic as actual magic cards? Say what? To clarify, as you have seen, for those of you who were not able to attend MagicCon Vegas or have not been checking up on the news from Wizards of the Coast official site, according to what they're saying, in the 2025 release calendar year, we will be getting not one, not two, but three brand new Universes Beyond sets to go along with the in-world sets of Magic. If you're still a little confused about this news and why this is a big deal, unlike in previous iterations such as the Lord of the Rings set, which were direct to modern, these ones are literally going to start at standard. The upcoming sets, as you can see on screen right now, for Final Fantasy and Marvel Spider-Man are officially going to coincide in standard with the official Magic products. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content. You can support me monthly for a small amount on Patreon, where I have all of my extended bonus footage posted. We also have a Redbubble spot where you can buy merch like stickers and shirts, or for free, all you can just do also is just join our growing community on Discord. Your support helps keep this channel going. All links are in the details below. Also keep in mind, since this rant is going to be more a little off the cuff, as I keep talking, I will put up a little bit of the article for those of you who haven't seen it. Obviously, it's up on Wizards' website, but as I'm talking about this, I'll try to point, of course, to little snippets here that are relevant to what I'm discussing. And I'll just kind of talk to you about how I overall feel about these announcements. Cardboard Crack kind of made a comic about this, and <laughs> I, I don't think Wizards was meant to take that seriously, but if you look at the comic, which I'm posting up right now, we're, oddly enough, closer to this being reality than I thought now that they've made these changes, or at least the changes that we are going to get in the next year. Good lord. Wow, the game has really changed a lot since uh, I first jumped in. Now, don't get me wrong. There are definitely going to be some sets that I want to talk about in a future video of what's coming out. But the focus of this video is to mostly cover, again, the universes beyond change that Wizards has kind of fallen back on. If you've seen a while ago, there was an earlier... Uh, announcement that they made when Universes Beyond was becoming a thing, and they assured all of us that none of this was intending to go into standard sets or Pioneer or anything like that. It was mostly geared towards either the Commander format, and as we saw with Lord of the Rings, it was just for modern and back. There wasn't any intention of doing anything that would mess around with standard. That, however, has kind of changed, and I, I can understand why... Wizards of the Coast, and I guess their parent company, Hasbro, want to see this change. I like money! If you didn't see the numbers from before, Lord of the Rings was very popular as a set to purchase for Magic. To the point where there was, of course, news articles that went out about the One Ring, as, as many have seen when they made some of the serialized cards. Specifically, the most notable one was literally the One of One of the One Ring, being sold, of course, to Post Malone. That, of course took a lot in for the community to show that people are kind of definitely noticing how I would say the game has changed over the years from being a small niche trading card game into something that's grown exponentially for a lot of different players out there for a lot of different reasons. This has also kind of gone as you've seen in a very unique direction with more broader appeal as they've started embracing more and more of the secret layer drops. Don't get me wrong, I do like secret layers. I do like some of the stuff that I have. In fact, I'm on screen right now. You can see I'm still holding on to it right now. I have a real Ghostbusters one. I have some of the Hatsune Miku. I have Street Fighter. I have a bunch of different ones that I've purchased over the years that are based on other properties that are not officially magic ones. And I have had fun with them. But the one thing that I always wanted to always emphasize, and I will be very clear about this is, I have no problem with, for example, them announcing SpongeBob cards for Magic. The issue I have, though, is I don't think these cards should be in standard products. Now, why do I think this way? I know there's been a lot of discussion. There's been a lot of contention. There have been various players out there. Those of you who are invested in the lore, those of you who are invested in competitive play, don't want to see, for example, you casting, say, <laughs> SpongeBob versus Iron Man and then you bring in Optimus Prime to then fight, and it kind of now feels less like Magic is, as a whole is a unique product. Rather than kind of me rambling a little bit more about this, let me kind of try to clarify and put this more into three specific points as to why I think this is not going to be the best solution for Magic going forward to expand the game. The first thing I just want to address is the most obvious one, which is the lore and the world building. Looking, for example, at the 2025 
um, timeline right now. As you see on screen, uh, we have our next set, which is Ether Drift. So this is supposed to be a Death Race set, and I I'm excited for this one. And then you see, of course, going forward after that, in April, it's going to be Tarkir Dragonstorm. So we have two main uh, sets that will continue on the story that's currently playing across uh, the multiverse and magic. However, we're going to take a break for that for a second, and we jump into Final Fantasy. So this is the first set that will officially be in a standard one. So in other words, again, you're going to have cards like Cloud or Sephiroth from like Final Fantasy VII or Chocobos integrated into our, some of our established characters like Chandra and Aetherdrift, as you saw. Some of you I know out there don't really care about this. Some of you I know are super hyped. I'm not a big Final Fantasy fan myself. I know of the games. I know of the characters. But it... I, I guess my issue that I would be fearful here is just as this gets more popular with the lore and the world building that they have created for the game, it feels like that's going to start taking more of a backseat to cater more towards these quick, quickly made, well, they're not going to be quickly made, but uh, with timed universes beyond sets that will kind of be more of the focus for new players versus, say, what established players have come to know and love. I actually do have a fairly large investment of time that I put into understanding at least the basics of what the timeline is for magic. And I do like the story. I love the characters. There's a lot of cool stuff out there, but it feels like Wizards is taking the lazy way out here. And the reason why I feel that way is just you're, you're taking away from the re very reason that many people have been playing for decades this game and just kind of going towards more the the easy cash grab. Throwing out there Marvel Spider-Man, for example, may get a ton of people into the game, we don't know if these players are going to care long enough to stick around for the rest of the lore that's been dumped over so many years. And another major issue with this is I can understand that Wizards, to a degree, has kind of burned out so much of the potential they could have had over the years. When we went from three set blocks where, for example, you were on a plane and it took like and it was like a three act play where you would have an introduction to the plane, such as um, Innistrad. And then you went to the second part of it where things kind of start falling apart. And then you get to the third part of it where the story of that block concludes. It created a nice little storyline for your cards to help you understand what's going on, why you should care about these characters, and just kind of go from there. But in recent years, we're getting a lot of these one-off sets that just feel like they're so convoluted. We're jumping through planes so quickly that it's very exhausting to kind of keep up with this. Last year, when we did the March of the Machine, that should have been a much more hype set, and that one should have gotten at least like a three-part act like the other ones. You could argue that the Phyrexia All Will Be One was kind of the part one, you had the part two, which was the March of the Machine, and then you kind of had an aftermath set that didn't really sell well, but that's a whole other issue. But that was kind of a pseudo three-part. The last time we had a full three-part set was in the 2018 to 2019 standard, when it was Guilds of Ravnica going into Ravnica Allegiance, and then finishing it up with War of the Spark. That actually got a lot of players super hyped and excited. I absolutely loved that whole storyline of all the Planeswalkers coming together to fight the big bad, which was Nico Bolas at the time. But as you kind of see, and I just mentioned this, was they've burned out all of their major villains over the years. We've already finished up that storyline. We just finished up the Phyrexian War again. There's just there's not really anything they set up to keep another storyline going. So to a degree, I could see why going from one set to another like this kind of helps buy Wizards time to kind of pad out the story a bit while they can just put out there some quick stuff like Marvel coming up. If they did it properly, honestly, we should have had by now a Netflix series that had a whole storyline that would continue on to coincide with a card release to get you more excited, to get more people caring about the characters. And I think that would have really strengthened the brand of Match at the Gathering, not just for the game, but also to kind of start giving a broader appeal to other people out there who may not be aware of it, but maybe who actually would like to try it out. I just feel like at this point, if they try to do it, and I know they've already announced that they are still planning on doing a series, is anybody going to care anymore? Is it too little too late, or is it still something that they can try to forge together and maybe get new people to check it out? My second part that I have that I may have a concern with this universe is beyond change is going to be the shallow player base. I kind of touched upon this a little bit with the first thought, but I'm going to elaborate a little bit more here. So what I mean by the shallow player base is, while adding in Marvel, adding in Final Fantasy at the time being, is going to expand everyone's interest in the game. Like just when we had more players jump in because of cards from Lord of the Rings. The issue that you're going to see here is, 
not everyone is going to be a fan of every single one of these sets. There are definitely a lot of Marvel fans out there, but many of them may not care about a Final Fantasy set. So they'll probably come in, you'll get a surge of brand new players to play maybe their decks. They'll put together something that's based around that. Maybe they'll throw in a couple of cards that they think are probably cool from Magic directly. And we don't know if they're going to stick around. They may pay what they want and then they just leave and they may not never come back to this game or they'll probably jump back to what they were playing before. Like, for example, on mobile, they have what Marvel Snap. Maybe they might just go back to that and just kind of call it a day. And for a company like Wizards and Hasbro, maybe they'll be happy where they'll get a ton of sales. But this also will alienate that established player base that maybe some of them who may like this stuff, but are not invested in magic for Spider-Man or Final Fantasy or Lord of the Rings. Some of these properties did integrate well. Going back again to Lord of the Rings, that fits perfectly well into Magic. It was a very nice, very well thought out transition. And I honestly thought that one was probably the best way to look at adding in a different universe into Magic. I'm not saying that Spider-Man doesn't fit into Magic. I have no problem with the cards again, but I just feel it might be awkward to have him directly playing with cards that are part of the actual standard set if it's a commander deck commander pretty much is kind of like its own thing so that's why i wouldn't care when you have secret layers or universe beyond into that but again going back to those properties they just sometimes don't always fit perfectly well into there and trust me there are definitely some planes that we have experienced recently that don't always fit very well with magic or just maybe just art wise they just feel a lot off-putting I wasn't a fan of the most recent set Duskmorn because most of the characters and designs just felt a little too not magic. I and I and I apologize because I know some of you out there like what you saw from Duskmorn, but it wasn't really my set. However, the set before that, Bloomboro with the anthropomorphic animals, I felt that felt very classic magic. That felt much more integrated. That set could have been released even 10, 20 years ago, and it would have fit perfectly into the game overall, just based on aesthetics and design. So to put it finally for this one, this one isn't a long point that I want to dwell on, but you will get an increased player base, but they're only going to be here as long as you support their property. So the people that are big fans of Final Fantasy may buy some booster packs, they'll buy maybe a, a pre-constructed deck, but once they get to like something else that's not Final Fantasy, we don't know how many of those players will stick around. And I think that hurts the game in the long term. What Wizards wants to do is they should be focusing again on keeping the established player base and finding a way to not only bring in those new players, but keep them here. Throwing in your favorite property for like one set may not keep them around long enough for them to care down the line. The third point I want to make is going to be the product fatigue and the overwhelming feeling you're going to get with all these products that are coming out. As you saw from the timeline as we posted it again and again throughout this video, we're looking at now six standard sets that are coming out in a year. This means that you're going to be getting a brand new set of magic cards every other month. That is exhausting, considering that most of these also will probably have a commander precon. We'll have a lot of updates now on Arena. That's a lot of cards that are being dumped into this. And keep in mind, we are currently set up right now where Standard is designed to now be a three-year rotation. So you're looking at, if you were to put the math into this, with the other sets that are currently in Standard, plus these going into 2025, you're looking at, I think, what is that now? If I did the math, that's up towards of like 8,000 to 9,000 cards that are legal in Standard. That is ridiculous. If you were to look at it from years ago, even as low as like five, uh, six years ago, most standard sets when it was a two-year rotation, you're looking at only about two to 3,000 cards in a standard rotation, which is still quite a bit, but at the same time, it's not overwhelming. You kind of figured out what were the stables very quickly, and you kind of were able to narrow it down from there. Six sets a year is way too much product, even if you're gonna start changing up how you wanna look at magic design. And then on top of this, and this is something that's going to be kind of coinciding with this, is they are going to start changing when rotation does happen. To make this now accommodating and make it a little simpler for newer players out there, changes to rotation will begin in 2027, as we see on screen right now. They're announcing that, well, as of that, that'll be now starting at the calendar year. So in other words, when we hit 2027 in January, that is when standard will rotate officially. We will no longer rotate with a fall set. To also accommodate for this, and Wizards does state this on their site, there will be no rotation in 2026 as we gear up for this change. So in other words, in 2026, a couple years from now, we're going to have an extremely bloated standard as we keep trying to figure this out. I don't know how this is going to work from the competitive side, so if those of you who are competitive to Magic out there, let me know how you feel about this change as well, because it seems that already, I think, 
a three year rotation was too slow. And this only will slow us down even more as they begin to make these changes overall for the game. So this is going to feel very overwhelming, very bloated, and it's going to be very hard for us to keep up with all of these new cards. I honestly believe that with all of these sets that are coming out, while many people might be excited for new cards, there's going to be so many cards that are going to go under the radar for a lot of players out there who are going to lose track of everything. Even myself as a content creator, there's a lot of cards that I would love to play and decks that I would love to build, but I just don't have all the time in the world to do all this. Even if I were to be given a full-time status of doing just magic content, with this uh, list coming out right now, it is going to be extremely exhausting to try to cover everything that catches my eye because there really is no time, even if I was to have like the best team in the world. And even the top creators on there, I'm sure would agree that that's a lot of product to have to go through and have to preview and talk about specific cards to highlight and then make decks for both whether it's budget decks, jank decks, commander decks, just all kinds of stuff out there will be a lot for a lot of players to take in. But with all that I've said right now, I don't wanna leave this final video on a bad note. Don't get me wrong, I'm being very realistic about everything, but I do wanna leave a little bit of optimism behind. For the massive percentage of people that are going to invest in a Final Fantasy set, a Marvel set in the future, or whatever, maybe even SpongeBob, I hope that for all of you that may tend to leave the game after your favorite IP is gone, I hope for those of you that actually do manage to stick around, take the time to actually appreciate what magic truly is at its core. I hope for those of you that do stick around even after maybe all of your friends have left the game to try other things or jump onto the next hot thing, we'll take the time to look back at the rich history of the game to appreciate how far we've come. And hopefully those of you that do stick around, you'll get to really treasure why many of us out there who have been invested in this game for years, even decades, maybe even since the inception of the game, see why we love it so much. Let me know where are you currently in your magic journey, and I would love to hear from you. I just hope for wizard's sake, this all turns out for the best. But as always, let's just hope that it doesn't go too far where they will abandon what brought them here in the first place. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play, in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!